QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Bank Reconciliation Opening Balance Problem. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars homepage. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the View dropdown and the Open Windows list. We're going to be taking a look at our bank reconciliation. We're going to be continuing on with the bank reconciliation, but focusing in specifically on a problem unique to the first bank reconciliation you might be doing within the system. So if you're following along, uh, then you want to take make sure that you've followed along with the prior presentations to go forward. If you just want to look at this particular problem and how to deal with it, then we'll be dealing with this. This is like the opening balance problem. My opening balance doesn't tie out for the first bank reconciliation to what is on the bank statement. So let's open up some of our reports as we get started here. I'm going to go to the reports drop down, uh, company and financial, go on down to the balance sheet standard. I'm going to be changing the dates up top. We're looking at the first month. So I'm going to change this from 010121 to 013121. January through December 2021 and OK. We're concentrated in, of course, on the cash here. We, we then are going to open up our bank reconciliation, which we have started, but we ran into the kind of this problem with this opening balance issue. So we're going to go to the uh, banking drop down. We're going to go to reconcile. And this is our issue here. We, we have this opening balance that is on our books at the 25,000. And if I look at my bank statement, it's not on the bank statement as 25,000, it's on the bank statement as 30,000. So that's gonna be our issue. Now, the question is of course, well, why? Like, and there could, you could run into another problem. You might have just zero in this account. You might have nothing there if, you, if this is your first bank reconciliation. That's the two typical problems. So if, if that's the case, now why would I put the 25,000 here if the bank says it was at 30,000 as of the beginning when I first started, because I started on January 1st, uh, 2021, which is the same as the end of December 31st, 2020. Why didn't I use 30,000 when I, when I started? Why didn't I use 30,000 as my opening balance? Because I needed the 25,000 because that's what was on my trial balance or balance sheet from my prior accounting system when I entered it into the books, meaning I'm assuming we assumed that we had a prior accounting system and we, we took the balance sheet and entered it into our system as of the cutoff date, January 1st, 2021. And going forward, that's what we're going to put in our system. Anything prior to that was in the prior system. And when I put it into the books, there was 25,000 in cash. I had to put that there to be in balance. That's what was on the books. So we had the 25,000 in there. Uh, notice that if you're in a situation where you just didn't enter an opening balance and you didn't have any prior accounting system, that might be a little bit easier of a, of a thing to solve. So in any case, what do we, what do we have here? What are we going to do with that? Well, I'm going to continue forward. We continued forward and put the ending balance here. So that's going to be the 89,335, 89,335. And I'm going to say continue. And then we basically checked every everything off that we could. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide the amounts that are past the date here. We checked everything off that we could, and the assumption then, just let's look let's look at the easy problem first. Like if this was zero, if you had a zero there, you just didn't input it, and you had no real accounting data prior to this, you just didn't enter the beginning balance. Then you can enter the beginning balance instead of using the opening balance thing if you didn't do that when you started the account then you can go directly into the register and just simply enter a deposit and it'll show up over here as a deposit rather than here as an opening balance but as long as you recognize that and just check it off then you'll still be okay because when we reconcile this opening balance is really just a deposit right you we're, we're reconciling this and then all the deposits so if you didn't if you didn't put it in the opening balance section but you include it in the deposit section you'll be okay just make sure that when you enter it as a deposit you, you classify it correctly, meaning you probably want to put it into the equity section. So you probably want to enter it into the system prior to January 1st, which is our cutoff. So in December, and either put it to, to the equity section, assuming it was an, own, an owner's investment into the company, or if you're going to put it to something like uh, if it was an expense or, or an income account, as long as you put that income account, if it doesn't belong in the current time period and the prior time period, it'll roll into equity anyways. So it probably belongs in equity. So then you can just enter the deposit, check it off, you'll be fine. If, you're, if you have a situation where you had the accounting system in a prior system before, and you were forced to enter a beginning balance like this of the 25,000, 
which is not the beginning balance on the bank statement, then the reason that that's going to happen is because there were outstanding checks and or deposits from the prior system, meaning you had checks that were written in the prior system that were included in this 25,000, decreasing the balance of the 25,000, which were not included in the balance on the bank statement because they had not yet cleared the bank. So there's a couple ways that you can approach that. You, if you have a bank reconciliation from the prior system, if you have a bank reconciliation showing you the uncleared transactions, the uncleared checks, then those should be the difference. You're going to say, okay, that's, that's basically the difference. And now you at least know what the difference is and you can kind of move forward. Now, the other way you can kind of think about that if you don't have access to the prior checks is we can kind of move forward and check everything else off on our system. In other words, we did the whole bank reconciliation here and we had these two items which we didn't check off. We found everything else to reconcile, which would make sense because these two items are things that cleared but which we didn't, we didn't include. We didn't put them in the system in January, in the current month. Why? Because they must have been written for us in December prior to this and now are clearing in the current month. They're not in our books at all because we started our current QuickBooks system as of January and we hadn't entered them into the system because we entered them into the prior system and they just hadn't cleared, right? So, so that means that really on the bank statement, this 30,000 minus these two checks, minus these two checks is going to be our 25,000. So note, if, if I was to just reconcile, if I checked everything off, off here and I have 25,000, which is wrong, it should be 30,000. And I check everything off, but I didn't check off these two because they're not there because I didn't, because I entered them in the last system in December, I'm in balance. I could just simply reconcile right there. So I could, I could just move forward. But then if you look at this bank rec, you're going to say, well, something is really weird there. It doesn't make any sense because like what happened? How did you reconcile without those two checks? And the, how is the beginning balance wrong? What you would like to do is basically check these two checks off. I'd, I'd like to, even though they were written in the prior period and they, they're after before the cutoff date, I want to put them into the current period because I want to show that they cleared the bank. And if I just reconcile right now, I'm not going to show anywhere that those checks cleared the bank. And my first bank rec looks really funny. So what I'd like to do is basically enter these two into the system. So what, and the best way to do that is to look at the prior system and say, let me, let me see what date they were entered in as of the prior system. And then, and then enter them into the, to the current system prior to the date. So what I'm, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to enter these two checks into our system prior to the cutoff date, you know, before January. And then I'm going to adjust this beginning balance to tie out to what's on the bank statement. In other words, I'm going to, I'm going to adjust this to the 30,000 and then I'm going to enter these two so that the beginning balance will be back down to 25,000 breaking out. However, the detail of it. So let's see what that would look like. I'm going to go, okay. So what I'd like to do is open the bank reconciliation, go, go to the lists chart of accounts, and I'm going to go double check the checking account. And I'm going to enter these now. Again, I would like to get the data for my prior accounting system for the unclear checks to get the exact data. So I'm going to basically make it up here. So I'm going to, I'm going to assume like 12, let's say 25, uh, 20 in the prior year instead of 21, the current year we're working on. And then there was no check number. So I'm going to say other. And then let's assume that this first one was going to Epiphone, our, our vendor, Epiphone. So I'm going to say tab and it was for 2600 so it didn't clear it didn't clear until january but it was entered sometime last december 2600 now when i look at it it might i might have been purchasing inventory at that point in time but i don't want to be putting this to inventory because that's going to be an assets type of account and i'm already tracking the inventory i, I already put the inventory in on the books uh, based on based on the inventory uh, that was on that was on the books. I've already added the inventory. So I don't want to put it to an asset account. I want it's going to have to roll over basically into uh, into the, the equity accounts. So so that so you and you might want to put a memo there and note that right when you do that. So let me just show you I'm going to say, okay, I can't put it to inventory because I've already entered the inventory the way it should be as of the cutoff date. So I and it should be going to some kind of income account. If this was going to the undeposited accounts, they would probably use uncategorized income, right? And, and in the memo, 
in the memo, we might want to say uh, this was to purchase inventory, but inventory was inventory was entered directly as of 1231.21. So in other words, I'm, if I put it to inventory, I'm going to double I'm going to double step the inventory because I entered the inventory already as of that point in time. So you might run in, into that into that issue. So I'm going to say, okay, tab. So there's that one. The, the second one, let's just say this is a normal kind of expense of some kind. So I'm going to say, uh, it's probably, I'm going to say this one, let's say it's on the 26. I'm going to say other. And then I'm going to say this is for, let's like, just say Edison or something like that, a normal phone uh, or electric bill, 2,400. It's kind of high, but I'll say 2400. And we'll put that to the utilities. Again, it's going to the utilities but it's going to the utilities in the prior period in December, which means it's going to go to an income statement account. Any expense income or income account will then roll over into equity. So it won't have any impact on the current time period. It'll, it'll, it'll roll out into equity. So I'm going to say tab and OK. And then if I scroll back up, notice this, this 25,000. You could change that. We could change that to 30,000 now at this point and that'll net out to basically 25,000 we enter two checks then that will decrease basically kind of like the opening balance back down but I don't really like to adjust this once it's been input and we've already adjusted the opening balance uh, account so I'm going to add another account and I want to basically increase the 30,000 like increase the beginning balance to 30,000 notice this is just a deposit so it's it's the beginning balance is just like checking off a deposit so I'm just going to basically add another deposit for the 5,000. I'm going to be putting it to the equity account just to net these two things out. So it's just so I can see the details. So in other words, I entered two decreases, two checks, and, but, and I was already in reconciled before. Now I'm going to enter the deposit, which is going to net out the beginning balance to bring us back up to that 30,000 while still giving us the detail of being able to check off those two checks and clear them. So I'm going to I'm going to enter a deposit. I'm going to make this as of 123120 and I'm going to say other and I'm going to make this a deposit of 5000 and this is going to be going to the equity account. So it needs to be going to equity. It's going to roll into equity. So it's going to be in cuz cuz notice the uh, opening balance went to uh went to the equity account called opening balance equity. And then we had to move it out of there to our normal equity account, which is equity, right? So it's going to be equity. If you're a company, it would be retained earnings typically. So I'm going to put it into the equity account. And this is going to be to adjust beginning ba balance to, uh, to the bank statement. And then I'm, it's going to say, hey, you're posting to like a retained earnings or equity type of account. I'm paraphrasing. Do you really want to do that? I'm going to say, yes, I would like to do that. And so, so now if I go back to my reconciliation, uh, you notice I was in balance before, but now I can check off the detail. And so what I want to do is say, I want to check these two off so that I can show that they cleared. So even though they were entered in the prior system, I want to say, okay, now I can basically say, these two I've cleared and I probably want to note it on my bank reconciliation and say, hey, these two cleared, but they were entered in the last time period and they caused us this funny thing that happened. But I want to show that they cleared in the current system and I can check those two off. But now, of course, we're off by the 5000 at this point because the beginning balance is wrong. The beginning balance should be 30,000. It should be 30,000 here and, and we have it at 25,000. Instead of adjusting this beginning balance, because then we would have had to change, we would have had to change that one transaction. You could have done that, but then the opening balance would have changed as well, and then we'd have that opening balance issue. We just said, I'm just going to enter another deposit, which is going to net that out, and the other deposit deposit netted out to the equity account, just like all of our other transactions, except we took it directly to the equity account this time, and so we just said, okay, those two net out. So, so in other words, we were in balance before, and in order to show the detail of it, we, we were in balance because these two netted out. In order to show the detail, we, we wanted to show those two checks, so we entered those two checks, so we entered the decrease, and then we had to enter the related increase over here, the deposit, which is really just the thing that trims up our opening balance to be the proper opening balance to line up to what was on the beginning balance in, in the bank statement.
And so then we can basically note that when we do our bank reconciliation, we can say, hey, the beginning balance is really this 25,000 plus this, this 5,000. And, and that's, and, and we can basically sh show that that's how the beginning balance was structured and the trial balance uh, when we first started this thing out. So now we can basically reconcile this thing. So now I can say, okay, now we're done. Let's go ahead and uh, reconcile. And then we're going to see the two, the reports that can be generated. So I'm going to take a look at uh, both reports. I like to see them both. So I'm going to display the reports. And so I'm going to say, okay. So within the reports, we have the, the reconciliation report for the summary report. And we're going to have a, a detailed report. Now I'm going to go into these in a bit more. So these are the two reports in a bit more detail next time. So we'll, we'll continue on and just kind of analyze these reports next time. This is the actual reconciliation. Uh, and what we did before, what we just finished up there was the process of reconciliating. So you kind of want to keep, and these reports are important to keep, keep a hold of. You might want to print these reports out because sometimes the system doesn't save each bank reconciliation if, and you can, they can get kind of, uh, you know, they don't save the data as, as, easily as some kind of other reports. You kind of want to print these reports out and have them on hand as you as you do your bank reconciliation. So we'll talk more about that next time.